right. Let's get an early start, 30 seconds start, all right? 30 seconds early. Uh, good to see you. Glad you're here. Look forward to God speaking to our hearts. Um, I just want to make sure I make it clear on this second song that we're going to do in the choir that uh, I could mess up on it. Um, Randy has told me to just follow the notes. Um, but I ask it, should I follow the notes the same way I follow my notes when I'm preaching? <laughs> so anyway, there's a little change up in the second verse to the first verse. The first verse in the chorus, their ladies are singing this part. And then the second verse, the men are singing the part. And I don't think they should do that. Can you? <laughs> I mean, why mess people up like that? Purpose or whoever writes these songs, you know, what are they trying to do to us, right? Don't they know we're men? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, at least we got a kick out of that. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're grateful for who you are. We thank you for the day that you've given us. Lord, we just thank you for the word of God uh, that never changes. Father, we seem to uh, be like a chameleon at times where we uh, change according to uh, wherever we are. And Lord, we just ask that you'd help us with that. God, just teach us, Lord, to wholly lean on you, trust you, and uh, just guide us and direct us today. God, uh, certainly uh, when Edward, any part of the word of God is being preached, uh, it's important. And so we pray, God, that you'd help us in the passages that uh, you have had us to today on September 26, 2021. Where we're living, and we pray for the morning message. We thank you for the Sunday school, and we pray for the evening message. That all these messages would be pleasing unto you, but most of all, again, that we'd have an ear to hear, that we would listen and not turn from your word. Bless the songs that we sing in the choir, and Father, bless the congregational singing, and just everything that takes place today. We want to be sure that we give you glory and honor. We pray this in Christ's name. second, third, and last, please, page 571.
scriptures so that I can have the faith that I can trust you, that I'll know you well enough to know that I can trust you. And Lord, just help me always to be faithful to your word. Lord, all the promises that are in that song, Lord, that if we'll only obey, that you'll give us. And it's true throughout the Bible, Lord, the many promises that you make in your word that if we'll only follow your word, that that's what you'll do for us. And lo, how slowful I am so many times, Lord, that I forget, and I do things on my own, that I need to trust and obey. Lord, we thank you for your presence here today. We thank you for the message that the pastor will bring, Lord. We thank you for the message of the song, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you give us an opportunity to come, Lord, and gather together and and. Lord, that we might be uplifting to one another and that your word can give us the faith that we need, Lord, to get through each day. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 That's interesting, isn't it? We don't really, sometimes we don't put these things together uh, as we should, at least maybe I don't. Um, really trust is belief, right? Belief, and then you have obedience. So the, the opposite of that, the reason the reason we have obedience, as Paul prayed, is because we have belief, we have trust, right? When we truly believe, when we truly trust, we obey. But the opposite again is right unbelief, unbelief. And so unbelief, what's the natural result again of unbelief? Disobedience. disobedience. I mean that's. This is not rocket science, I don't think. I think it's pretty simple. You know? But that's what we need, right? I, that's what I need. I need the cookies on the lower shelf to understand that the reason I disobey is because I just don't believe God. And the reason I do obey, the only reason is because I believe God. And what God says it has nothing to do with you and me other than the belief aspect, right? It's all God or not God. That's really what it comes down to. 
boy, oh boy, help us, right? Uh, Teacher of the Week is Lisa Smith. We appreciate her. Say amen. 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 Uh, Richard and Laura Badgett, uh, Missionaries of the Week, continue to lift them up uh, to the Lord in prayer. And uh, just pray that God would continue to guide us and direct us how we can help them. I know they have some projects going on that we can help them with. And so uh, let's pray together that uh, God would just uh, watch over them. Greg Siebold, Randolph County Sheriff. I certainly want to pray uh, for him. And then the U UNC Hospital Police Department. I want to lift them up uh, to the Lord prayer. Uh, several birthdays coming up. Christina Johnson, Hannah Johnson, Lindsay Scarlett uh, are all having birthdays. And so uh, happy birthday to them. And then uh, I, I can't remember if I said this, but Kendall's address is in the uh, last week uh, in the bulletin. So certainly want you to write to her, send her a card or something. She's here with us somewhere. She's hiding behind uh, Joshua. But there she is. There she is. All right. So anyway, write her or send her a card or something. Uh, let her know you're thinking about her. Uh, don't forget, uh, vote on the budget tonight. And uh, then uh, choir practice has been changed from the 3rd to the 10th. And so we'll have choir practice on the 10th and the 17th. All right. Amen. I don't 
It sounded good. <laughs> Pastor, you got it right, too. I saw that. <laughs> Let's take our hymn books. <laughs> Let's take our hymn books once again, please, as the car comes down and turn to page 438. Jesus saves. Let's stand and sing all four verses, please. Page 438. <coughs> take the baby on her second surgery. She had surgery on Thursday and then another surgery on Friday. All of that uh, went well, except uh, something happened to the placenta on the second surgery, and so they had to go ahead and take the baby. Uh, the baby was two pounds and eight ounces, and the baby's doing good from all that we understand, and the mother's doing good, but have a long recovery. I was telling them in Sunday school, we're, we're preaching tonight on his mercy endureth forever. Now, oftentimes, if you're like me, we, we look at things on the surface, don't we? Are y'all like me? We, we see things on the surface like, man, she has this tumor, she has a baby, and why all this, you know, and all these things that are going on. But yet, having this baby early in this way, maybe, I don't know, because I'm not God, but now the baby will stay, of course, in the NICU and, and get better and well, and she won't have to you know, do the things that a normal mother would do, and she can recoup during that time. I call that the mercy of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. Because, boy, oh boy, uh, I'm just thinking about the husband here, Zach. Uh, he's, he's not, he's, he's a father, he's not a mother. Right. You, you'll get that in a minute. But this is just true, folks. We, we're so messed up in our mindset. God has made us all different. You know, he's made male and female different. Now, I'm not saying God might have some other way to do all these things. And, but ultimately, what we need to see is God's mercy and his grace and how, how blessed we are to have him as our God. And so the baby and mother, pray for them. And, of course, pray for Zach and, and all those that are involved uh, there. Um, 
Hannah Smith will be flying out Thursday to go to be with Becca in Indiana, and uh, then they'll be driving back Monday, uh, so Becca can be with us on our vacation, and Hannah can be worn out from uh, her time with Becca, because I can almost promise you Becca's going to wear her out, and uh, that's what she did to us old folks. She better do it to this young man, right? And uh, so anyway, they're playing this golf tournament, uh, this Ryder Cup on, on, off of Lake Michigan, and man, they gave me so many different details about Lake Michigan that I've got to tell Becca about because she didn't tell us about this. She just told us there were six beaches within 30 minutes of her, and she took us to how many? Four? Uh, no, she just found the sixth one. She said, I found another beach, you know, on the Lake Michigan. And uh, you don't imagine a lake being a beach, but <clears throat> has anybody been to Lake Michigan? All right, several of you have. It is like a beach, you know. It's just... <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. But anyway, uh, this, they said some interesting facts yesterday about this place, uh, and uh, I didn't. I got to relay these back to Becca because she didn't give me all the facts about uh, Lake Michigan. She just told me there was a bunch of beaches there she could get to. Uh, so then, pray for her and Hannah uh, as they go there. Uh, continue to pray for JJ as he continues to recover from uh, this uh, rhinovirus that he had. A lot of children get during the fall. Um, uh, the St. Jean's, all doing better uh, for all indications. So praise God for that. Appreciate the prayers there. Uh, this man, Ashley, that we mentioned to you, and his wife, Melinda, Ashley's not doing better. Uh, he's got some blood clots in his lungs, which is not good. So pray there for him and his wife, uh, Melinda. Just lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Tony will have surgery on the 28th, uh, that, which will be Tuesday. So Lift him up to the Lord in prayer, if you would. Continue to pray for Suzanne. Continue to lift her up as she uh, continues to uh, wait to, for her surgery and, and different things there. Uh, also, um, <clears throat> continue to pray for Karen's mom. Uh, good days, bad days, just different things there with her, so continue to lift her up. I certainly want to continue to lift up. Uh, I, I would advise, would, would tell you, and all of us should do this, take some of these salvation requests these people that have been on our salvation list for a long time. Uh, we know God can take them off, uh, but uh, pray God would uh, have us to pray and seek his face uh, for some of these folks. Uh, I know, again, you can't pray for all of them, but certainly you can pray for some of them. And uh, let's see that as important uh, for prayer. Um, uh, as we already mentioned, the Richard Moore Badger, our missionaries of the month, so we'll certainly lift them up uh, to the Lord in prayer. All right, any other requests that you may have? I know some cannot get back on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, so we'll give you the opportunity. Um, yes, Sherry? I have an update about my cousin, April. He had the surgery this week. It went well. Okay. Um, she was in a lot of pain, and spent the nights in her home, and the mass they found in her intestine was just fluid. Mm. So they put her back in to worry about it and get her home. All right, amen. Good. Good to hear. All right. So I appreciate that, sir. Good news about April. Anybody else? All right, unspoken requests. Certainly want to pray for those and uh, lift them up to the Lord in prayer that you may have. Let me ask uh, Brother Richie if he'd pray for us, please, sir. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for <clears throat> just another Lord's Day. Thank you for the uh, health and strength that you've given us and uh, privilege to be in your house of worship today, Lord. We realize that uh, we could be uh, in the hospital, we could be in sure. a rest home or somewhere, Lord, and mm -hmm. you blessed us, Lord, and uh, you watched over us, and people at the, the church had COVID, and Lord, you've uh, restored them to health, and we thank you and praise you for that. We don't take it lightly, Lord, we know uh, all blessings come from you, and sure. we just want to thank you and praise you for each and every one. And all that you do for us, Lord, so many things that uh, we fail to even realize mm. and, and to meditate on the things that you do for us. Right. And Lord, thank you for your great love. And thank you for the salvation that came through your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we do lift up all these prayer requests. Many, Lord, we thank them uh, back and Tony there, Lord, and thank you for. Uh, the surgery, two surgeries there, Lord, and for the little one, that, uh, Lord, and just uh, we continue to pray that you might watch over them and just, just 
uh, have your hands and blessings on them, Lord. And uh, we think of Hannah Smith, her uh, be traveling there to Indiana, uh, flying to Indiana. And we just pray that you might put a hedge protection around her and that she and uh, Rebecca might have a good time of fellowship and just uh, mm -hmm. watch over them as they come back on Monday. Yes. Just be with them in a special way. And uh, little JJ, we ask you might continue to be with him and his virus. And uh, we think of uh, Ashley and Melinda, and Ashley not doing well, Lord. And uh, Lord, if it be your will, uh, we just pray that you might just touch him, uh, restore him to health. And uh, yet, Lord, uh, you, you have perfect uh, knowledge of the future, and you have a plan, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, we just pray that your plan might be carried out, Lord. We're not telling you what to do. But uh, if you could touch and heal, we thank and praise you, sure. And uh, we thank the Portia Dawson to continue to be with her. Uh, we thank our brother Tony his surgery on Tuesday, Lord. We just ask that you might give the doctors uh, uh, wisdom there, Lord. And we just pray that it might be a success and that he might be restored to health in your will. And uh, we thank of Sherry's cousin and the surgery there, Lord, and thank you for the, uh, there wasn't any malignancy there, Lord, and we just praise you for what you did there in that situation. Will you lift up our, all of our missionaries and just be with them in a special way, Lord. Watch over, supply all of our needs, and uh, just uh, help them to uh, uh, preach the gospel, Lord, and carry out the good word, and help us too, Lord, to go out in this world and be the witness that we should be, and that people might even see uh, Jesus Christ in our life each and every day. Lord, once again, we ask you might be with our pastor now, and just uh, once again, fill him with the Spirit of God, just use him in a special way, speak through him, speak through our hearts, and we'll thank you, and we'll praise you for all that you're going to do, and all of these things we ask in Christ's name and for his sake. <coughs> Amen. 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 All right, turning your Bibles to uh, Matthew. Chapter 7. Yes. I forgot about um, my assistant director. He left work six, two and a half weeks ago. And he's, he has a feeding tube that he, he, he gives to himself his nutrition because he had cancer yeah. several years ago. And he, he doesn't speak well. So he, he feeds himself this <clears> tube. <throat> well, he had the flu. Um, he doesn't have COVID. He had the flu. So his feeding tube has gotten a staph infection mm -hmm. and he had surgery for the staph infection prior. So uh, I appreciate that you did that. Right, well, thanks, Richard. His name's Richard? Richard. All right, let's pray for Richard. Heavenly Father, we do pray for Richard. Thank you for, uh, again, Lord, we can call upon your name at any moment. Obviously, you brought this to the heart of Valerie, and so we pray along with her for Richard. Whatever his spiritual condition may be, uh, certainly would be most important. We pray that he knows you. If not, we pray that this would bring him to a place of uh, repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, just help us to be a witness and a testimony and be always willing to call upon your name for others. We pray this in Christ's wonderful name for his sake. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. I've got a question for you, but I'm not going to ask it until after I read this passage of Scripture. And because uh, it's, it's an important question. As we read this, uh, certainly we've already been through the first five verses, and uh, uh, maybe this morning we're only going to go through one verse of Scripture. And so I'm going to ask you a question in just a minute, all right? And so let's, let's read this together, and then I'll ask my question. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt, wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye pearls before the swine, 
lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Let's pray. Father, grateful for the reading of your word. We pray as we uh, go through uh, several passages of scripture to discern exactly what you mean here in this passage of scripture, Father, that uh, we would do just to the word of God. We let the spirit of God speak and uh, let it not be our own words. Father, we just pray that you'd help us, God. We need you. And just show us exactly what uh, you would desire us to have today. And to leave this place meditating upon what our response should be to the word of God today. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Question for you. Did this, does this seem unusual? I mean, does anything seem unusual to you there, to you there in these six verses? I mean, what is, what is uh, on the surface again, I, I think most people would come on the surface and if they read this surfacefully, there would be something there you'd be like, huh? <laughs> what would it be? Now, we've already did the first five verses, so I mean, you're at an advantage here, okay, because we've already talked about what the first five verses mean and don't mean, okay? Some of you are not at an advantage because you might not have been here, I understand that, Okay? But what do you think from the five verses, and then today we're going to hit verse six, just surfacely? You'd have to judge, right? I mean, like, the first five verses are all about not judging, right? And then all of a sudden it comes to verse six, and he says, cast out pearls, not before the signs. Don't give what's holy to the dogs. And they're like, huh? Who's a dog and who, who, who's a swine? How am I going to figure that out? Right? Surfacely, you would read that past scripture and you'd have to say, and I'm going to tell you, the natural man would say, that's a contradiction. <laughs> but it's no contradiction <clears throat> at all. The truth of the matter is, verse 6 is complementary to the other five verses. Say, so how in the world is that? Well, we should know that by what we've already preached the last two messages. He's not talking about not judging. He's talking about not being the final judge. Right? Amen? And we look through several passages of Scripture where God tells us where we're, we're actually supposed to judge. Okay? And so here, there has to be something that goes along. And that's really the problem with taking a Scripture out of its context. In, in trying to uh, make it sound or be something that it's not. Always the scripture should be taken in its context. And uh, certainly this, we know who preached this sermon, right? <laughs> the Lord Jesus. So we know he's not contradictory. So obviously this verse has to go along with the other verses that it's around. And so it's really complementary to what he's already said. Why is that? Because let's look at verse 5, okay? He says, thou hypocrite, okay? We talked about that last week. He said, you're a play actor. You, you say one thing and do another, and you're always, and we said this, hypercritical of other people, but not willing, right, to get the own, other things out of your life, okay? You're trying to uh, be a policeman, a spiritual policeman on other people's lives, and yet your own life is not what it ought to be. Right? Amen? And so he comes, he says, you hypocrite. He said, first, right, cast out the two by four, the beam, the, the bigger thing, out of your own eye. And by the way, folks, listen, being hypercritical of other people is a major league sin. And it's, right, it's right quiet in here. But I'm just telling you, judging other people and being the final judge on people's lives and, 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 and not giving people, and boy, oh boy, I hope you'll praise God tonight that we're going to be uh, preaching a message on being thankful that his mercy endureth forever for us. Amen. And really, that's the attitude we ought to have. I've said to you before, all of this in context, again, goes back to the Beatitudes, goes back to the type of Christian, the type of person that you and I are supposed to be. And so we think, well, I've never killed it. You ask people when witnessing to them. You say, hey, are, are, do, you, do you know the Lord? Or, uh, do you have any relationship with God? And, and the first things they want to tell you is, I've never killed anybody. 
I've never, I've never raped anybody. They tell these major sins, right, that they've never done. And I, I think we probably should say back to them, have you ever been a busybody in other people's matters? Oh, yeah, I've done that. Well, you're, you're lumped in with murderers. What? Well, that's what God says. See, we don't view this thing the way God views it, right? And all along through this whole passage of Scripture, what is he dealing with? Is he dealing with the outward? No, 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 no. He's dealing with the inward. Because what goes on in the outward is from the inward. And all of us, including myself, need to recognize that. The reason I do what I do is because what's on the inside. And I've got to ask God to continue to help me and to continue to cleanse me by his blood. Hey, man. Paul says it like this. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But the only way I can do all things is if Christ strengthens me. Day by day, moment by moment, continually. Right? Amen. I need his strength. And so, he says, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye. And then he says this. Then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote that's in thy brother's eye. And then he comes to verse 6. So it's not that... Now see, here's the thing. When it comes to criticism, right? Now we talked about all these things, but we want to rehash it, right? So we can think right. Criticism is not a bad thing. Remember how we said that? Criticism, ultimate good criticism, is aimed to what? To do what for somebody? Starts with an H. Help people. Right? This is our attitude. We want to help people. Now, I'm going to use Philip. Philip, right? Alan. Alan. <laughs> Philip, right? I am now. Please come back to church, Alan. Why am I calling him Philip? I'm calling him Philip. I'm telling you why, Philip. Because you look like I mean, <laughs> Alan. Alan. Take it on the video. <laughs> because Kaylee dates a guy named Philip. Is his name Philip? Praise God, I'm free. I'm free from you, Alan. <laughs> I keep thinking you and, and Kaylee and, man, Alan. I'm not using you, Alan. <laughs> now, Alan works at Chick-fil-A, right? Alan works at Chick-fil-A. Philip does not work at Chick-fil-A. I don't know where Philip works. Where you work, Philip? No, not that Philip. <laughs> now, he works in the, in the, in the, uh, the producing the, the food department. Whatever you call that. The kitchen. The kitchen. <laughs> right, the kitchen. I mean, good this morning. Anyway, so he's got a guy there. And he may have a guy like this, but this is a fictitious story. Okay? The guy's always making the chicken wrong. Okay? And it's, it's Alan's responsibility, you know, because he's, if he's over the kitchen, and so he, he needs to teach this guy, right, how to make the chicken right, correct? So when he goes to him, he says, hey, man, you ain't making the chicken right, man. You need to get this right. Is that a good response? No, no, no. He needs to go to God, and he says, hey, hey, man, you, you know, make chicken right. Let me show you how it's supposed to be done, right? He's trying to help him. And by the way, he's helping himself. Is he not? Listen, when you help other people in the spiritual realm, you're helping yourself. You've got an ally. Amen? But when you go to somebody and you're hypercritical and you're not really going to help them, you're really trying to hinder them. That's wrong. Amen? And so all of this is to help people. Right? Amen? Yeah, right, Al. Amen. He didn't want me to call him. <laughs> I'm going to talk to him afterwards. I'm going to shake him. I might even, well, I'm going to dinner with the Huffs, uh, supper to Huff, but I might take him to dinner just to make up for all this stuff. <laughs> anyway, y'all hold me to it, okay? <laughs> but the reason is not that you're not to, again, not to do these things. You just need to make sure your heart is right and your attitude is right towards the people that you're trying to help, okay? Y'all with me? And so he comes to verse 6. And it, and, it, and, it, and it seems as if it's a change of gears, and it is sort of, but it ultimately goes along with everything else because when it comes to people and giving out the gospel and helping people spiritually, because that's really what it's all about, right? Now, it doesn't matter how our Wednesday night prayer meetings go. 
which most, if we're honest, and it's not just Faith Baptist Church, it's most every church. What we focus on Wednesday night prayer meeting is physical needs rather than spiritual needs. Now, are physical needs important? Of course they are. But I'm just telling you, folks, we get more upset with somebody dying and going to heaven than we do people that are dying and going to hell. That's wrong. Now, we're all guilty of this, right? I believe we are. Because I'm not the one giving all the requests. You're going you're gonna to get in this with me. You know why? Because I'm going to bring you in with me. I'm not going it alone. God hasn't called the pastor to go alone. It's the pastor and the people. Amen? So you're giving the request. So most of our requests were focused on physical things. And God, the only way that's going to change is God changes us. Right? But when dealing with people, you have to have discernment and discretion. Everybody's not alike. Right? And so Jesus comes here. And of course, the, the, the Bible is dealing with spiritual life. Amen? And what the spiritual life is all about. This world is not our home. We have another place that Jesus is preparing for us. Amen? But yet, we're constantly thinking about those things. And really, when it comes to people, we spend a lot of time casting our pearls before the swine and giving God's holy truth. And I believe that's what he's talking about here is his truth and his word to the dogs. Do you not believe that is true? I believe it's true. And I believe there's a reason behind that. And so he says, first and foremost, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast your pearls before the swine. Why? Lest they trample them under feet and turn again and rend you. So what does this all mean? What is he saying here? I believe first and foremost is that we need to learn how when sharing the truth of God's word, when, when, when giving out God's word and his truth, because God's truth is a pearl, amen? Is it not? It's a pearl. And, and we need to be careful that God's word is holy. And we need to be careful how we give it out. And the first and foremost thing is, now in order, now let's go back to a, a dog. Now, you and I today, we're different, right, when it comes to dogs. Are we not? Why is that different? So I'm trying to get you awake. I thought I already got you awake when I messed Alan's name up with Philip. Why is that? Why do we view dogs differently than they would in the, in the scriptures? Because we've done what? We've humanized. We've domesticated them. Right? But this is not the kind of... And so it's, is it not easy... To look at a dog in the scriptures and then get that picture in your mind of what a dog is? Of course it is, because that's the way we view dogs. We don't eat dogs. Well, some people might. Dogs are like humans. It's just they're untouchable. Right? Don't touch my dog. But here, these were these were ravaging animals. These were dogs that these were like wolves that, that went across in the streets. And, and so the Jew would understand this. This was a these dogs were uh, ravening. They, they were out in the streets roaming and, and just really evil, you know, as a dog can be evil, right? And so it's not the dog that we think about. It was a, like a wolf. Dog is always hunting, doing bad things and uh, tearing things up. And, and so that's what the view is here. And then the swine, the pig. The, the, to, to the Jew, again, a pig was what? Unclean, dirty, impure. And so, again, when you think that in, in your mind, Jesus is saying, don't give the truth to these dogs, to these swine. Now, is he saying, don't give it to an unbeliever? No, he said, well, all unbelievers are dogs. He's fine. They're, they're, they're not all the same. You, you really, you're with me, I hope, that all believers are not the same. Unbelievers. Well, all believers aren't the same either. <laughs> so there's a different way to approach people. Now, folks, listen, I'm, I'm selling you for this. I'm telling you, 
God help us, over the last 40, 50 years, we have made the gospel, the truth of God's word, mechanical. We approach people, all people, in the same way. All people should not be approached in the same way. They cannot be. There are some people you're going to approach that, that, that are approachable, and there's going to be some people that you approach, and they are dogs and swine, and you shouldn't give them anything. How are you going to know the difference? Yes. Huh? You're going to know the difference by judging, but it's going to be what kind of judgment? Righteous judgment. It's going to be spirit-filled Bible judgment. But if you don't, if you're not spirit-filled and you don't have any Bible knowledge much of the New Testament, how are you going to do that? You're not. Let's be honest, right? And so we got to create something. We got to make it mechanical. We got to be able to, hey, we got because we got to get the gospel out. People got to have the truth. And so, since we're not going to do it God's way, we got to find another way. But the other way is not right, is it? Not according to the Bible. Because there's going to be some people you approach that you're not going to speak at all to them. Because God's spirit, and it's going to be, folks, there's going to be knowledge that you'll have of the situation and the person. Okay, you with me? I'm going to give you a prime example in the scriptures. Look with me at Luke chapter 23. The way Jesus handled people. This is so, so important. You've got two, two kings here, and Jesus approaches both of them in a different way. Because one was a swine and a dog, and the other was not. Okay? Now, neither one of them, as far as we know, got saved, trusted Christ, as far as we know. We don't know because of God, you know, again, we just don't know. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. Now again, let's bear in mind, are we speaking spiritual things here or physical things? Just by that statement, Christ a king. Christ. What is Christ? Messiah. Okay, now this is not trick questions. This is spiritual. He, he is the Messiah, right? He's the sent one. He's the one that everybody's looking for, right? To set men free. So this is spiritual. All of this is, by the way, everything really at the end of the day is spiritual. Because that's what's going to matter at the end of life, folks. Not whether or not you had a great physical life. But have you been born again? Have you been saved? That's what's important. It definitely does not need to be mechanical. We need to learn how to deal with people. And notice how Jesus deals with Pilate. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou king of the Jews? Are you who they say you are? Are you the Messiah? Are you the ultimate king? Are you the one that's going to sit on David's throne? Are you the Messiah? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. He answered him. That's important. Then said to Pilate, to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, hey, and really all you could say this, when Pilate found a way out, because that's really what happens here, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself was also at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. That sounds good on the surface, doesn't it? Doesn't it? He was great, glad to see him. For he was desirous to see him for a long season. You get that? Man, folks, listen. In most cases, we'd be like, yeah, right? He's looking for Jesus. <laughs> He's looking to see him for a long season. He's been wanting to come to Jesus. 
Now Jesus is here. You with me? You stay with me now because we're talking about casting thy pearls before the swine and giving holy things to the dogs. We're talking about and the first and foremost thing that we need to understand when it comes to spiritual matters, we need to discern differences in people and where they are. And I'm telling you, Pilate and Herod were on two different planes. One seems to be the one he should be speaking to, and the other one seems to be the one he shouldn't be speaking to. Help us. Notice what he says here. Then he questioned him, with many words. Now wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Pilate just asked him one question. He answered him. Y'all with me? Herod questioned him with many things. <clears throat> but he answered him nothing. Why? that only he could have. You and I cannot get this from ourselves. <laughs> the Spirit of God and the Word of God have to show us these things. Herod had his opportunity. You will know who Herod is, right? Well, John the Baptist tried to get him to listen. Tried to get him to hear. Said, you don't deserve, you, you, you're wrong in taking your brother Philip's wife. You're wrong. But he wouldn't listen. And so you know what he did? Really and truly, this is, this is a, just a straight up fact. He cut the head off of John the Baptist. You remember what the Bible said there? He didn't want to do it. He had deep respect for John the Baptist. But you know what? He had more respect for himself and these people, drunken people in this party he was around with. So he got rid of his witness. He cut it off. <clears throat> he was a swine. He was a dog. Was he not? Now you and I, again, folks, listen. What I'm trying to tell you here is, boy, oh boy, we're going to have to be more getting in the Word of God and the Word of God getting in us before we can determine these kind of things of what we should say or not say, right? But we've made it mechanical. We keep going to people and going to people and going to people. And really, sometimes we probably should not say anything else at all because we've already said enough. And then we make it worse. Sometimes, I believe, believers try to egg people on. Do you realize how wicked and wrong that is to keep going at somebody that you know is going to come back to you and rend you and tear you up? It's not right. That's a wrong heart attitude. God and God alone is the only one that can give us this discernment so you see clearly you have two different people. And, 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 and Jesus speaks to one and he doesn't speak to the other. And so again, we, 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 we need to know uh, and have discernment. I want you to look in Acts. Paul shows this constantly in the scriptures where he goes and gives truth to one. And then when they reject it, he turns away and turns to somebody else. Now, only the Spirit of God can guide us and direct us in this. But I want you to look at Acts chapter 13. And look at the Apostle Paul. Same kind of situations here. Acts 13. Excuse me. In verse, starting in uh, verse number 44. The Bible says, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole and, and almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Now, wouldn't that be just let's just say Siler City? Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if all the, almost the whole Siler City came today to hear the word of God? We'd be like, listen, folks, yeah, that'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Right. It would be. But notice what happens here. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. And the Jews should have been the very ones to receive the Messiah. 
They should have been the very ones that should have been thankful that, that Paul was preaching the gospel. But they're the ones contradicting and blaspheming. Again, dogs and, and swine. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary. Why? Because God said it was. They were to go to the Jew first. They were to present the gospel to them. They were to present the truth to them, holy, unblemished. And that's what they did. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But see ye, he put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Do you see that? And so Paul says here, Paul's not judging them. Right? They judge themselves. Are you with me? They've chosen to turn away from the truth. You say, how many times have you talked? I don't know. I don't know. How many times do I talk to somebody and tell them the truth? I don't know. But God knows. Does he not? He knows. And if we spend more time in the word of God, we spend more time uh, desiring to share the gospel, the truth with people, God would show us these things. Paul says, listen, you judge yourselves not worthy of eternal life. I'm here to give it to you because I know it's only found in Jesus. But they turned away from it and were constantly going and, 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 and contradicting what he was saying and blaspheming what he was saying and, and he was speaking the truth. So he turned away. Then one more passage of scripture. Well, there's several, but Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. <clears throat> In verse number uh, uh, 6. This is what Paul, again, and with Silas, speaking to these people, he said, and when they opposed themselves, verse 6 of chapter 18, and blaspheme. So, is it God's fault? Is it Paul's fault? Is it Jesus' fault? Is it Silas's fault that they didn't listen? No, it's their fault. And God's judging them for that. Okay? He says, in blaspheme, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. Okay? And so, flipping back to Matthew chapter 7. All through the scriptures you're going to see, again, <clears throat> this discernment of different types of people. And then there's also, uh, look with me at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, chapter 9 and verse 22. Not only do you have differences in people, but you have differences in presentation to the people. Okay? <laughs> this is so important too. We got to understand this, folks. You, you First and foremost, you have to differentiate between who is a dog, who is a swine, and who is somebody that you can present the gospel to. But we say, I, I thought I was supposed to present it to everybody. Well, you are and you're not. At, at times, there, there's, there's been presentation to people and they've rejected it so much, it, it's time for you not to say anything else to them. Right? And then, as we do speak to people, learning where they are, okay? Now, folks, let's just go here first. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Notice what Paul says here. Verse number 19 and following. He said, For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being without law, without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things unto all men that I might by all means save some. Now, people have 
twisted this and made it all kinds of craziness. We say that we need to have rock and roll in the church so we can reach the hippie and the rock and roll guy. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about meeting people where they are. Now, I would... Would you approach... Now, in, in when I was growing up, you had different types of people. You know, you had... You did too. You had people categorized people. You had three types that I remember, I think. There might be... You had the jocks, right? Did y'all have the jocks in your day? Paul, did you have the jocks in your day? Okay, good. And you had the... What we called them... They, y'all might have called them hippies. We called them freaks. You had the freaks. Did you have the freaks? Not quite as many. Not quite as many. <laughs> Sam got many freaks. <laughs> They're all freaks. Oh, uh, anyway. So you had the jocks, you had the freaks, and then you had the preppies. Did y'all have the preppies? Sorry, Paul, me and you. I do remember your name. Amen. So you, so you had the jocks, the freaks, and the pep, peppies. <laughs> That's me, I'm the peppy. Uh, the, the preppies, right? Yeah, these, there's probably other categories in there. Y'all could probably think of them. Uh, I don't know what they are. Uh, but anyway, you can think of the categories that were in your day, right? So, do you, do you approach the freak in the preppy in the same way? No. <laughs> Why? Why not, man? I mean, it's all the gospel. Why not? They think different. They're, they're got, they got different backgrounds. They're different. But hey, it's so much easier to approach people in a mechanical way. Mechanical way, why? It's easier for you. It's easier for you. Yeah, you don't have to think. That's the worldly philosophy. That's salesmanship type stuff. Listen, God wants us to think. God wants us to really give out the gospel and learn people. Amen. And learn that you can't just go out and quote the Romans road to everybody. By the way, you can't go to everybody. Some people are offended if you go to them and say, are you saved? But another person might not be offended by that. Right? Do you see the categories that Paul lays out here? There's Jews. There's all kinds of different people. There's poor. There's middle class. You don't handle all these people the same way. Right? They're all given the gospel. Right? But each one would come at a different angle. So it's not only that you differentiate between people, but the message that you might say to them, there might be, you might learn some things from them that's offensive. And so the Spirit of God will lead you in another way to talk to them. Right? Let me, folks, listen. Do you realize people, especially in our society, and we go to them and we talk about a heavenly father and they don't even have a father. They don't even know who their father is. Is that how you would approach somebody with the gospel? Well, you shouldn't. If you do, because they relate father. There's a negative there. So you know what you should do? You should be led by the spirit of God, the word of God, to avoid even the word father. Are, are you with me? That would be an automatic turnoff, folks. From the God. Say, well, they ought to know. They don't know. They don't even know their own father. They're not even feeling wanted. And you come to her and tell them, I got a heavenly father. Hey, maybe, hey, maybe you disagree with me, but uh, and that's okay too. That's fine. But I'm just telling you, we, we you can't approach people all in the same way. Everybody's different. And I believe this is exactly what Paul's saying in 1 Corinthians 9. He's not saying change our, our standards and, and change our things that we're doing. He says change your attitude and learn people where they are and meet them there. Amen? Mm -hmm. And let God work in your heart and your life to be able to talk with them. So we need to make sure, again, that uh, the, the, the way that we're, uh, we're seeing people as different the way that we approach them is different. Amen. The, the things that we might present to them is different. We need to understand that. And then last of all, when it comes to sharing the message of the gospel, when speaking to anybody, we need to make sure that we don't get off course. Don't, don't get off course when you're sharing the gospel. There's going to be all kinds. Now, we don't have time 
We usually never do, but you ought to read John chapter 4 when Jesus dealt with the woman at the well. You need to see that in the way Jesus dealt with the Samaritan woman, an unbeliever there, and how he never got off course. You realize, you read the dialogue, she kept trying to get him off course, but Jesus stayed on course. You're a sinner, you need a Savior. You and I, now folks, listen, we live in a day that, that I look at. For the last 10 years, one of the main focus, focuses in Christianity has been apologetics. Now, I'm not against apologetics, but I'm telling you, apologetics don't save people. How much you know about uh, uh, all these things, it is not going to matter when you're dealing with unbelievers. You need to stay the course. It doesn't matter what you know about predestination and election and all these other kind of things. Matter of fact, I believe this with all my heart. I'm Germex on it. I don't even think you ought to share those things with unbelievers. I don't. They don't know, how are they going to understand predestination and election and all these other things when you and I don't even understand them? They're a sinner in need of a Savior. Every sinner is going to get you and me off course. Right? That's the ploy of the devil in the flesh to go away from who we really are. Sinners in need of a Savior. All this other stuff comes afterwards. Not before. And yet, we've spent the last 10, 15 years learning again about our faith, which is nothing wrong with that, apologetics. But really, the ultimate thing is, we're to go out and present the gospel and make disciples, not just give them truth, but be willing to learn about these people and help them along the way. Am I speaking the truth? We, we've got a mindset where we're messed up and we're not thinking right. We've got to have God to help us. And so we have to have discerning. John says it like this in 1 John. Try the spirits to see if they're of God. There's only one way to do that. It's through the Word of God and the Spirit of God working in you to know these things. And God's got to help us. Now, can't folks, listen. Don't go out of here and say your pastor is against giving out New Testaments or giving out tracts. But I'm just saying we need to think about these things that we're doing. Should we pass a track? I know all the stories. There's another past scripture you can look at, folks. Acts chapter 8. Not right, not right now, but you read that passage of scripture in Acts chapter 8 about the, the, the uh, I about said the man at the well, but it's the, uh, what's the guy's name that, that, that Philip goes down and he talks to? The Ethiopian eunuch. Read that. <clears throat> Here's a man that's reading the scriptures. This is the norm, folks. Now, I'm not saying people can't get saved by reading a tract. I'm not saying that people can't get saved. I've heard people, the Gideons, present that, hey, these people that got saved, that they found this Bible in the, in the hotels. I'm not telling you that I'm against all that, but I'm telling you for the norm, norm, norm is the human instrument Dealing with the soul and people. God dealing with them through them. The Ethiopian eunuch is a prime example. He says, Philip says, do you understand what you read? He's reading the book of Isaiah. He says, do you understand what you read? He says, how can I accept some man help me? Now the man is a spirit-filled man. And not some, just some man. It's some man that knows the scriptures. And the spirit is leading him. That's God's normal way. But you see what we've become? We've tried to make it easier to be a witness. Well, God says your everyday life should be a witness. Is that not true? Now, how have we done this? Now, folks, you might go out of here thinking, I'm against some of these things. I'm not against these things. I'm against these things when we replace what we're supposed to be in everyday life. Every person sitting in these pews ought to be witnessing. Amen? Should you not? Wherever you are, shouldn't you be a witness of God's grace and His mercy? Have you, have you 
Do you realize that it is true that you are, most people, the only Bible anybody's going to read is you? Did you realize Paul said, you are my epistles, not written with ink and, and, and paper, but written in your hearts. You're the testimony of Christ. You're the one that's living out the faith. You're the human agent, not the track you hand them. Amen, preacher. Not the New Testament you give them. It's the life that you live. Right? The power is in the Word of God that you present. Don't go out here and say, God, the pastor said the power's in me. You know, I'm the one. No, no, no. You're the agent that God used of His transforming power that He has worked in your heart, in your life, and He wants you to go out and share that with other people. But you've got to discern who you're talking to. You've got to learn how to present it. It can't just be ABC with everybody. God has to work in your heart and life. He's got to show you that everybody's different. And you've got to learn there's differences in people. There's differences uh, in, 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 in what to give people, what to say to people, how to present that. And then you need to understand that you can't get off course when sharing the gospel. And always, always, most likely, a sinner is going to try to lead you away. Can I ask you a question? Let's go back to Jesus when it comes to Pilate and Herod. Were they both interested in Jesus? Of course they were. But both their hearts were different. Weren't they? I had to listen. Listen, I, I know Pilate. Again, Jesus, we didn't see it in this past scripture, but he, he talked with him over and over again. Pilate, Pilate, I believe, was under conviction. I believe it. I believe his wife tried to help him out. <clears throat> Pilate understood. And he was given opportunity, but so was Herod. But not this time. Because Jesus knew. The reasoning behind his questioning. And only God can give us that discernment. And boy, it's going to take some time in God's word. And the reason, again, the, do you realize the Bible tells us clear not to put a novice in the position of authority ever? Why is that? Because they don't know the word of God. That, but, but, but what do we do? But oh boy, we, I've seen this, folks. I've seen this. And we blame the people. I've seen this a whole lot. An old boy gets saved. He gets on fire for God. And next thing you know, we want to send him to Bible college and call him to preach ourselves. Just because he got on fire for God. And we put him out there. And then he gets messed up and all that. And we forget it. Throw him to the curb. I'll tell you, that's our fault. Because a lot of people build people up that don't need to be built up. They need to get in the Word of God. They need to be helped, amen, to before they ever go out there. And that's the same thing with witnessing. Amen. We, we, need, we, need, we need disciples, right? God help us all. It's much easier just to say, hey, just start passing out tracts. Just do this, do that. Rather than learning more about our Savior, more about what God says in His Word, more about the New Testament, more about Christianity, what it really is all about. It's about Jesus, and it's about a life-transforming power that you and I cannot do ourselves. And yet, we've mechanically given out the gospel, and people have said yes to those mechanics, and maybe they've never said yes to the person of Christ. That's a shame, isn't it? That's not what we want. That shouldn't be what we desire. Now, we can't help it sometimes. Sometimes people do things and fools, but I'll tell you what we can do. We can make sure that we're presenting the gospel and the truth and we're not getting off course with people and, and truly that, that the best we know how to present the gospel to them. God help us. Stand to our feet, Brother Randy. is going to come, Miss Melanie. Jesus says, cast not, or, or give not what is holy to the dogs and cast not thy pearls before the swine. Because if you do this, it, it's only going to be worse. It's not going to be better. And so there's a time and place and by the way, this is even for believers, folks. There's a time and place to stop talking to believers. 
It just, again, you got to give them over to God. And let God take care of them. You'll see that all through the scriptures too. There's a time where it just, there's no use in saying anything else. Why? Because they're just going to come back and, and, and say all kinds of other things. And you're only making it worse on them and on you. So we have to have discernment. Jesus says we need to learn this. We need to have, we need to get in the word and let the word get in us and God teach us how to approach people and be discerning on people that we're talking to. And you know what that takes? It takes time. Time that we don't have because we got everything else we're doing. But being in relationships with people and trying to figure out who people are and all those kind of things, it takes time. It takes time to spend a new word and it takes time to be with people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father and our great God, we're thankful for the preaching of your word. Father, we know, God, we, we all have a tendency to take the easy way out. And Father, we develop programs, we develop other things, nothing, we're not saying there's anything wrong with a program. And Father, ultimately, Father, we need to spend some time with you and your word, and we need to spend time with other people so we might have discernment of how to help them and know exactly the words that you might want us to give to them. And Father, not take this flippantly, lightly. I know I've done it many a time. Father, I pray, dear God, you'd help us all to examine our own hearts and see where we are when it comes to witnessing and coming to giving out the gospel. I know it's not the same for everybody. We know one plants, one waters. Father, we know, God, each person is different. And we see in the scriptures how you handle people different and how Paul handled people different. And so we pray you'd help us to do the same. Father, we just pray that you would just bless the invitation. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hymn number 479, you come, God spoken to your heart. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the thank thee for the word of God. We thank thee that there are no mistakes in it because it's your word. It's your mind. It's your thinking. And how different we find it to be from our own thinking many times. And we need to um, be as Moses who uh, refused what seemed a normal thing for him, the, the riches of Egypt, and instead he chose for himself the reproaches of Christ, those things that uh, would bring suffering upon uh, the Lord Jesus Christ were the same sort of things that brought suffering upon him, and we need to make that choice as well, that we would choose those things that would cause us to think as you do, even if it brings uh, hardship or inconvenience to us. So our Father, we pray that you will help us to humble ourselves before thee, the Almighty God, before thy word, and trust it and obey it. We ask it in Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. Amen.